Elaist and Show and Tell present An Evening with Fran Lebowitz. Author, journalist, and social observer will take the stage Wednesday, September 25th at the Montalban Theatre. Tickets and information at laist.com slash events. We're introducing a new podcast from LA as studios passing the mantle. Exploring stories that connect generations and sometimes divide them. I'm Larry Mantle. And I'm Desmond, his son and co-host. Listen to Passing the Mantle wherever you listen to podcasts. Today on the LA Report. Fire crews in Santa Barbara County are dealing with rough conditions as they try to keep the lake fire from charring more acreage. The city of L.A. gets sued for allegedly interfering with construction of housing for low-income and unhoused people a block from the beach. The lawsuit claims Councilmember Tracy Park and City Attorney Heidi Feldstein Soto have tied up the project in red tape. And the family that runs the donkey cart attraction on L.A.'s Olvera Street hears its fate. Good morning. It's Friday, July 12th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from LAist 89.3. The lake fire continues to burn in Santa Barbara County with over 36,000 acres charred northeast of Los Olivos. Containment remains at 16 percent. Jacob Margolis reports firefighters have started setting fires of their own to protect nearby towns. It's a technique known as backburning. Firefighters use these big metal cans with long nozzles to drip a mix of flaming diesel and gasoline on dry brush. The idea being that if they can burn up that dried brush in a controlled manner, they can rob the main wildfire of fuel before it gets there, causing it to peter out. Captain Scott Safechuck is with Santa Barbara County Fire. In conjunction with putting bulldozers in there, aerial operations, it definitely improved that area over there. The backburn helped keep fire away from homes, and they'll do more of it if the favorable conditions hold. I'm Jacob Margolis. A heat wave that's been scorching much of Southern California for weeks now is particularly dangerous for people who are unhoused. Megan Botel reports aid groups and volunteers note the lack of access to water and other resources. Tony Gomez spent the past two summers living in Skid Row before he secured housing earlier this year. He says he remembers people dropping like flies during the summer, passing out from dehydration and heat stroke. The nonprofit Water Drop LA says people on Skid Row have access to just half a person's minimum daily water requirement. The organization and others say city and county resources often fall short, so they're stepping up to help with water, shade, and other types of care. I'm Megan Botel. Will Los Angeles officials allow a housing development to be built on city-owned land near the beach in Venice? Attorneys suing the city hope the answer will be yes. Nick Gerda reports. The suit accuses the city of L.A. of illegally stopping work on the Venice Dell housing development. The project is supposed to provide dozens of units for unhoused and low-income residents. It was previously approved by the city council, but has faced fierce opposition from nearby residents. Council member Tracy Park and the city attorney are named in the lawsuit filed this week. They did not have comment for us. Coming up, how the National Park Service is fighting graffiti vandalism at its most popular Southland location. I'm LAS science reporter Jacob Margolis, and I want you to join me for We Are Where We Eat, LAS live event series with the James Beard Foundation. We're going to take a look at how the climate emergency has impacted restaurants here in LA, with special guests from some great local spots like Post and Beam, Providence, and Kismet. Oh, and of course, we'll have something tasty for everyone to try. It's July 18th, and you can grab your tickets over at las.com slash events. I'm LAist reporter Caitlin Hernandez. The journalists of LAist work for you. Living in Southern California is complicated. The LAPD was just, they they were merciless. My job is to explain it. Before the 1970s, there were a lot of public bathrooms and urinals in California to answer your basic questions and help you make sense of the big issues we're facing, discover community, and get the help you need. LAist, independent journalism, fact-based journalism. Back now to the L.A. Report. Los Angeles County's District Attorney's Office has an Asian American and Pacific Islander advisory board, and it held a town hall last night in response to the police shooting of a man in Koreatown in May. 40-year-old Yong Yang was experiencing a mental health crisis and armed with a knife during the confrontation in his parents' home. Robert Garova brings you the latest. 
Organizers called on the city and county to provide more ways of responding without guns to mental health crisis situations. The panelists, some of them members of crisis teams, called for more de-escalation training for police and more patience from officers who show up to such incidents. A recent LAist investigation found that between 2017 and 2023, nearly one-third of shootings by LAPD involved a person perceived by officers to be experiencing a mental health crisis. I'm Robert Garova. Do you remember that story we brought you a few weeks ago about a stuffed donkey and his cart? It's an attraction at Olvera Street. Well, the family behind it was facing eviction after 57 years, and the public concern drew the support of the LA City Council. All that apparently was for naught, though. Now that the El Pueblo Board of Commissioners unanimously voted yesterday to move forward with removing the donkey and cart stand. You can hear more about what led up to the decision at LAist.com. And you've probably heard the phrase, leave no trace when you're camping or hiking in the great outdoors. But plenty of people visiting Joshua Tree are missing the memo. McKenna Sievertson has more on what it takes to clean up vandalism in the national park. Joshua Tree is famous for its towering rocks and fields of flowers, but it deals with hundreds of vandalism reports each year. People put nail polish on rocks and leave stickers behind in the desert, but spray paint is the most common offender. Anna Teagarden works with the National Park. We try to manage these lands so that future generations, our children, our grandchildren can have this. And when people graffiti or vandalize, it, it detracts. She says reporting unsolicited artwork you come across is helpful but maybe just don't leave your mark when you visit. For LAist, I'm McKenna Siebertson. The excessive heat warning continues in the inland mountains and deserts through tomorrow. A deeper marine layer, though, will bring cooler temperatures to the valleys. You can expect highs today from the beaches into downtown L.A. in the mid-70s to mid-80s. Orange County will be in the upper 80s. It'll be around 90 in coastal valleys in the IE and inland mountains, up around 100 degrees. And the deserts will be up to around 115. Thank you for listening to the L.A. Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. LAist and Show & Tell present An Evening with Fran Lebowitz, Be part of the live audience as one of our most insightful social commentators takes on current events. This is Leibowitz Off the Cuff. The evening will also include a book signing after the show along with an audience question and answer session. It's Wednesday, September 25th at the Ricardo Montalban Theatre in Hollywood. Tickets and information at laist.com slash events.